In the previous lessons, we have talked about Fourier's law, steady-state heat transfer problem, conductivity, and thermal contact conductance. Now, let's see how we can apply such knowledge in real simulation problems. The first problem we want to solve is related to home insulation. Good insulation can provide resistance to heat flow and thus significantly lower the heating and cooling costs. It improves the comfort and at the same time improves energy efficiency. So how does house insulation work? Let's assume it's a cold day in winter. Heat energy flows from all heated living spaces to adjacent unheated objects. For example, the walls, the windows, and the door. Basically, the enclosure of the house. Most common insulation works by slowing such conductive heat flow through this enclosure. So usually a layer of low conductivity material is added for the walls. In this example, we analyze the insulation effect of a simple house structure through a steady state thermal analysis. Here we have a small dwelling that sits in a cold environment with outside temperature equals to negative 5 degrees Celsius. Inside the house, there is a heat source, which is assumed to provide constant heat flow to all of the internal surfaces. The house is also assumed to not to have any leakage, meaning that the heat is purely transferred by conduction in the materials. On the outside surface of the house, heat is constantly removed to the cold environment by convection. For the boundary conditions in the steady state thermal simulation, we applied a constant and uniform heat flux for the entire interior surface. Of course, it's a simplification we made for the simulation. In real life, the heat flux might not be perfectly uniform due to complex geometry and varying distances between the surfaces and the heat source. For the exterior surface of the house, we added a convection boundary condition. Convection is one of the three modes of heat transfer. The physics of convection will be discussed in later sections in this course. Here, we can view convection as a boundary condition that removes heat energy from a hot surface to the cold ambient environment. For the materials in this model, we use isotropic materials with constant thermal conductivity. The walls and the door are molded as plywood. The window is made of glass and the floor is made of marble. Solving this problem, we can see that the exterior surface has a temperature close to the ambient temperature, which is negative 5 degrees Celsius. On the interior surface, the maximum temperature is around 11 degrees Celsius. Also, we can see that the temperature variation on the windows, door, and walls is obvious. This is expected because the larger the conductivity is for the material, the smaller the temperature gradient would be. Since glass has larger conductivity, the temperature in window is lower. Additionally, since the door and windows have a smaller thickness compared to the walls, the temperature difference is expected to be less. So in this case, the inside wall's temperature is only 11 degrees Celsius, and the window's temperature is even below 0 degrees Celsius. The owner is unhappy with the result and decides to add an insulation layer inside the walls to increase the internal temperature and at the same time save energy costs. The insulation layer he adds is made of styrofoam, which has a low conductivity, 0.02 watt per meter Kelvin. The thickness of the foam layer is 25 millimeter. The owner pastes the foam layer to the wall perfectly. So here, we assume he covers all the interior surface and the thermal contact is also perfect. Let's run the simulation again and check the results. Now, the inner walls has a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius, which is a 13 degree increase from the previous design. Plotting the temperature distribution, we can find that temperature drops around 10 degrees Celsius in this thin foam layer. I think the owner would be quite satisfied with the result, but know that here we have made an assumption of perfect enclosure of the house as well as perfect insulation. In real life, the improvement of the temperature might not be as dramatic as we saw here. You see that we have a convection boundary condition added for this model to dissipate heat from a warm surface to the cold environment. What if we remove these convection boundary conditions? How will heat leave the house then? Will that cause some problem? The answer is yes. 
in the absence of such boundary conditions. This problem cannot be solved in a steady state manner because there is no balanced input and output of heat energy. Attempting to solve this as a steady state problem will lead to unreasonable results, such as infinitely large temperature or simply an error message from the solver. From a different but similar perspective, consider a structural analysis. Can we solve a static analysis with only loads but no boundary condition? We know that it will bring us the rigid motion error. Now, let's have a look of another example. You might have noticed your laptop heating up, especially when you have a lot of applications running simultaneously. This happens because running more applications causes the CPU to be more active consuming more electricity, which in turn generates more heat. Laptop heating is a major problem that engineers must medicate while designing the product. Overheating can damage the delicate electronic components inside the laptop. In some serious cases, it can even lead to burns or other safety issues. A laptop is a complex system of many components. Among these components, the CPU and battery are two examples of major heating sources. The components are mostly in contact with each other, and hence heat transfer occurs primarily through conduction. To cool down the system, many laptops are installed with a cooling fan to dissipate heat. In our simulation here, we will not model the cooling fan though. The heat outflow will simply be done by convection from the laptop case to the ambient environment. Let's have a look of the laptop geometry for our simulation. It consists of a PCB with various electronic components, including CPU, battery, hard drive, DVD driver, and card reader. All these components, including the PCB, are enclosed by a plastic case. Different components of the laptop are composed of different materials. For example, the CPU is composed of silicon whose conductivity varies with temperature. The PCB board is made of an orthotropic material. In the through thickness direction, the thermal conductivity is 0.25 watt per meter Kelvin. In the implant direction, the value is much larger, it's 390 watt per meter Kelvin. Now, let's look at the boundary condition for this problem. The two main sources of heating are the CPU and the battery. Here, we define internal heat generations on these components. An internal heat generation is always applied to a volume. It represents that heat energy is generated per unit time per unit volume. For the outflow of the heat energy, we define the convection boundary condition on the outside surface of the plastic enclosure. Between different electronic components and the plastic enclosure, thermal contact is defined. For the contact between the components and the plastic enclosure, we will test perfect and imperfect conductance and see how much the internal components is heated up in these two tests. When we run the thermal analysis and look at the temperature distribution, we find that the maximum temperature on the CPU is about 71 degrees Celsius if the contact is perfect. However, when the thermal contact is not perfect, the temperature of the CPU is increased to 106 degrees Celsius. This behavior is actually expected because perfect conductance ensures no resistance of heat flow from the electronic components to the enclosure. This way, the heat can be more efficiently dissipated to the outside air through convection. Thus, in this case, perfect thermal contact results in a lower average temperature of all the electronic components. Actually, this is why thermal compounds are used in electronic devices to ensure good thermal contact between components generating heat and components dissipating the heat. Now, let's check the balance of the input heat energy and output energy for this steady state thermal analysis. The input energy comes from the internal heat generation. We can calculate the input heat by multiplying the internal heat generation magnitude with the volume of the part. Then, we sum up the values from the two sources in this case. Note that we're talking about energy here, but in fact, the unit of the values are watt, which is energy per second. Since it's a steady state analysis, 
we can think of this as a constant heat energy input to the system per unit time. For the heat removal, it's done by the convection boundary condition. The computational solver can report the amount of heat lost on the convection boundary. You can see that the heat removal amount exactly matches the input amount of energy. Now that you have seen these two simulation examples, you can try them out yourself. Follow the instructions in the next part of this section to set up the problem, run the analysis, and interpret the results.